please join me in welcoming our next U.S. Senator, Peter Welch. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Margaret and I are thrilled to be getting on board this train. And by the way, the trains are being funded by the infrastructure bill, and it's about time. So let's keep those trains rolling from Montreal down to New York City. And it was, as Jill mentioned, 16 years ago, Jill was here, Lieutenant Governor Molly Gray was here when we were running to take the seat in the United States House of Representatives. We had good women supporting us, and we're going to have a good woman succeeding me, and you'll be hearing from Becca Ballin in a minute. And we know this, you know, all the drama of the election is really not over, but we know the die is cast. The arguments have been made, and the choices are really very clear, and we're encouraging Vermonters to exercise their right to vote. It is about whether we have a government that believes in democracy. And democracy is not just a tool we believe in. It's a tool we need to help folks with unaffordable housing, to help folks with the child care that our families need, to help address climate change, which we finally did in this Inf Inflation Reduction Act. And we can, can continue this. And we can get a vote to restore reproductive freedom if we keep Senator Patrick Leahy's seat democratic. That's what we are gonna do. So, vote, vote, vote. Some folks have voted, but their ballot is on their kitchen table. Bring it in. That doesn't count. Some folks want to vote early. They still can walk down to the town clerks and vote. And some folks prefer to show up and enjoy that wonderful ritual of seeing neighbors and vote in person on Tuesday. Vote. Our job is to vote and do everything we can to remind Vermonters they have to vote so they have a say in the future of this country. We are going to win this election, and we're going to carry on the Vermont tradition of standing up for a democracy that fights and defends and protects the rights of every citizen. All of us in it together. So thank you for doing everything that you can. And now I want to introduce, we're going to hear from the- Why you continue support the Ukrainian debacle? Our next, we're going to hear from you later, and we're going to hear right now from the next member of Congress, that is going to be Becca Ballin, our Senate President Pro Tem, Becca Ballin. Okay, everybody here, I need you to understand. The okay, here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to say. This is an indication of where we are in this country. This is an indication that we have stopped listening to each other. We have stopped coming together. We have stopped listening to each other. We must have the decency to let people talk to one another or else we are at risk of losing this democracy. So he has a right to his opinion and we also have a right to be here saying forward motion in this country, forward motion. We have to come together a nation and say, we are not gonna be a people who demonize each other. We are not gonna be a people who tear each other down. The stakes could not be more high. We have a choice ahead of us. Are we going to put norms back together or not? Are we gonna defend our democratic institutions or not? We have election deniers on the ballot, even here in Vermont, as we speak. I need all of you, all of you to understand it's not just about having great candidates, which we do. This train is full of great candidates. The most important thing is getting out the vote. So I need you to find five people, 10 people, 15 people in your community that haven't engaged in this election and turn them out to vote. 
and believe, believe that we can make a difference because we can and we will. Thank you so much. And next, I want to introduce Brenda Siegel, who is running for governor here in Vermont. We need to support Brenda. Come on out. Good morning, Burlington. I am so excited to be here and to have seen most many of your faces throughout the last six months. And I want to say that right now is about all Vermonters being able to be housed us protecting not only reproductive liberty, but civil liberties, LGBTQIA rights, and gender affirming care. And we need leadership on those issues. And I see everyone in this train and every one of you who is ready to stand up and fight to make a difference. And what we need right now is for each of you to make sure, as Becca said, you have five or 10 friends that you talk to and you tell them to vote and vote blue from Peter Welch to Becca Ballin to me and to everyone you're gonna hear from today because that's the work that we have to do. And when we all wake up on November 9th, it is up to all of us to keep fighting this fight, keep moving forward on the issues that we care most about and that matter to our communities and our neighbors. And as Becca said, it is time for us to start listening to each other and lifting as we rise, and building a Vermont, not only that works for all of us, but where we all can feel that we are supported and loved in our communities. That's the work that we all have to do together. So I thank you all for coming. Make sure you get out and vote. And it is my pleasure to introduce our next Lieutenant Governor, and one of my dear friends, David Zuckerman. Thank you, Brenda. Next governor of the state of Vermont, give it up for her. Let's give it up for Peter Welsh, next U.S. Senator from Vermont. Let's give it up for Becca Bell, first congresswoman from Vermont. So it's been said, and I'm gonna say it again, democracy is on the line, and we need to do what we can here, which is have robust turnout, which is encourage people to participate no matter what their views are and what their beliefs are, and show that we, transition our democracy through the ballot box with civility and decency and through working on the issues and talking to people where they're at, talking to them about the issues that are so critical to them, our housing crisis, our childcare crisis, our climate crisis. I know on the one hand we're saying, what a beautiful day. This is insane, people. This is insane. In just a few weeks, we have a ski tournament in Killington. Think about it. This is about our planet, our children, and our future. And so go out there today and tomorrow and Tuesday and talk to not just your friends about voting, but some of the folks you don't know and give them the information that you know about to help get them out there to vote for this incredible group of people, both the ones that have spoken before me and the ones that are coming after. Thank you for being here today but now go out there and make sure you're there tomorrow and Tuesday. And democracy is not just voting. We have to continue on after Tuesday fighting for our fellow citizens of Vermont who are deeply struggling under the economic burdens of this day and under the anxiety of our climate. So thank you for being here. I'm excited to be your next Lieutenant Governor, and I'm excited to work alongside an incredible slate of statewide candidates here in Vermont. And I'm incredibly honored to be able to introduce the next speaker who I served with, served with in the House, who led in the legislature on the Climate Caucus, who led on cannabis reform, which you know I worked on for a long time as well, and who is going to be the next person to oversee our elections and our businesses in Vermont with an incredibly steady hand, an incredible mind, an incredible spirit. Sarah Copenhagen. <laughs> Hello, Burlington. It's so great to be out here. It's great to see this energy. We've got a lot of uh, House and Senate candidates in the in the audience here today. Thank you for taking a moment off the campaign trail to come and rally with us. I'm running for Secretary of State because democracy is on the ballot right now. 
And when democracy wins, climate wins. When democracy wins, our families win, whether that is housing or childcare or a livable wage. And so I'm gonna just double down on what a few of the other speakers have said, and I'm gonna ask you to please find five people who you think might be a little disconnected. Maybe they're too busy. Maybe they've got, they're have got they juggling two jobs. Maybe they're juggling uh, the absence of uh, good, reliable childcare. Find five people between now and Tuesday. Offer to sit down with them. Share your thoughts with them. Encourage them to vote. Teach them how to vote if they've never done it before. Because we need to make sure that we are doubling down on democracy here in Vermont because we know that the issues that are important to Vermont and Vermonters and our uh, our climate are are all going to be solved with a strong democracy. So thank you so much for coming out today. And I am really excited to introduce the next, the first elected female attorney general, Charity Clark. Thank you, Sarah. It is great to see this crowd. I, like you, have showed up on a Sunday morning to meet the candidates, and it's really exciting to see you here today. The Attorney General has a role on the national stage, and I will make sure as Attorney General that Vermont's voice is heard. You also play a role when it comes to defending democracy. You must vote. But I, um, I, wanna, I have a little story time for you. One year, my mom found out her best friend from high school wasn't voting. So she said, hey, Shelly, I'm going to take you out to lunch. And guess what day mom picked? <laughs> yep. So I'm not saying hoodwink your friends, but maybe you should take them to lunch. And if you're not in the mood to be creative like my mom, you can volunteer with the Vermont Democratic Party and get out the vote. Um, I uh, want to point out um, we are all here today on this amazing train. My campaign manager and I took the train to New York City, and it was a really wonderful experience. So thanks to uh, you know the Vermont, uh, Vermont train and Amtrak for this. It's, it's very, let's just say it, it's cool. Um, without further ado, I want to introduce, I believe, our last speaker who is somewhere. Oh, there you are. You, you appeared. It's Mike Pichek. Well, thank you so much, Charity. Thank you so much. It's great to see so many Democrats here celebrating our Whistle stop tour to victory. Uh, thank you for being here today. I'm Mike Pichak. I'm running for state treasurer, but I don't really want to talk too much about that. I want to talk about why we need to vote for everyone you just heard from. If we want a climate that we can live in for the next 100 years, we need to send Peter Welsh and Becca to Washington, D.C. If we want a democracy that we can live in and be proud of for the next 100 years, we need to send Peter Welsh and Becca to Washington, D.C. If we want a Vermont that shares our values, we need to vote overwhelmingly for Proposition 2 and Proposition 5. And if we want a Vermont where we can afford to live here, we can be proud to live here, our children can live here, our grandchildren can live here, we need to elect every single Democrat that you just heard from to put forward the, the Democratic plan to help working Vermonters and to help us move forward as a state. Please vote for all of these great people. Please volunteer. There are volunteer coordinators here to help. We could use the phone banking. We could use the door knocking. We could still use the money, believe it or not. But please do what you can to get out the vote. And more importantly, do what you can to volunteer. Thank you all for being here. Good Congratulations, everyone. Good luck on uh, November 8th. Thank you so much. All aboard! <laughs> on, the, on the train to victory, let's go!